Oop, here we go. Here we go. All right. It should just do it instantly now. Yeah. Oh. Oh dear. It's saying that there's no there's no signal. Is there anything? Is there anything coming through? Yeah, we go. There we go. All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the live stream. Yeah. Can you hear me all right? I've got a new little pop filter thing on my microphone. Don't know whether it sounds different. Also, the camera angle's different, and I'll explain that in just a sec. Well, I, mean, I can explain it now, really. Basically, uh, if you follow me on Twitter, actually, I can get it up. I can get it up the stream. I can get it up the stream while people are while people are joining. Hopefully, you know, everyone knows. Hopefully, my tweet went out saying that this was live. But um, can I show this on stream? Yeah, I can show this on stream. So um, if I scroll down. Um, on my Twitter. Where is it? Uh, I tweet so much, I don't even know. You know, it's, it's just too much tweets going on. Here we go, here we go. So, if you're wondering why the camera angle is kind of, kind of funky right now, uh, this tweet essentially explains the reason as to why. Uh, my TV just fell over, it smashed on my desk, just my luck. Essentially, um, as that tweet describes, uh, I was at my desk, um, and my TV got smashed to bits. Um, I've got a picture of it on my phone. Maybe I'll post it on Twitter at a later point. Uh, but right now I'm on an 18-inch uh, screen. Uh, so it's kind of like going back to the the times where I'd watch TV in my room and I'd watch Doctor Who on a tiny screen, and you'd have to like squint to see Peter Capaldi's face. That's kind of the vibe of this this setup right now. Uh, hoping to get some new equipment soon. So if you're wondering why um, I'm so much more in a weird camera angle, then that is the reason. It's kind of like you're on Tharys' desk, IRL. Um, so if that's what you've always wanted to be, then then now you are. But uh, before we get into it, obviously I'll say hello. See people are already piling in great stuff. Do me a favor. Like the stream if you haven't already. Also, you know, if you want, if you're feeling generous, as, as that tweet describes, I just, you know, um, smashed my TV. And I'm having to buy a bunch of new equipment, a new keyboard, new mouse, um, and hopefully a new webcam as well. So, uh, if you want, please donate to the stream if you enjoy it. But you don't have to, of course. Hello to RMG, Breakstop, Urban Plumbers, Dominic um, Carrera, uh, The Who Review, BXR, Mark Femkopf, uh, Rob, Bo Rob uh, Bonham. I hope I've said that correctly. Probably not. Lewis Wright, uh, BXR, I think I said, Michael Orange, Planet Adam, Ben Stokes, Paul Malley, um, see a lot of the familiar faces, Roomba Wars, Tyler, that's a great name, Ryle, how are you all doing? Hope you're all doing okay. Uh, it's great to see all you in here. Let's see what you guys are saying. When the fuck is the trailer coming out? Oh, I can, is it the first minute? Yeah, we're past the first minute. I can say fuck now. Um, I don't know. Hopefully soon, for the love of God, like BBC, what are you doing? What are you playing at? You know, it's been what now, like, um, what's, what's, uh, what's it, um, we're, we're like, you know, we're, we're like 10 days away now from October, and if it's coming out in October, we really need a trailer sooner rather than later, um, so yeah, I agree with you, I don't know where, where the, um, you get a new TV at Amazon or Asda Ben Twin, very specific Asda, I haven't decided yet, I'm probably going to go for a more monitor type thing, um, for, you know, a more sort of, um, uh, like PC sort of setup, so yeah, like because I'm getting a new PC as well. You know, I've, I've been like spurging on like all sorts of new equipment, a proper mechanical keyboard and everything. So um, yeah, I am pretty much broke now. Um, I hope thirteen uh, a time where she's without companions. I agree. This is something I'll we'll get into, but obviously, you guys, if you've seen the news, we'll we'll be talking more about that in depth and my thoughts on that. But I do agree. Uh, love you, Tharys, you leak lord. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, by the way, I know uh, a channel that just reacts to Doctor Who episodes. Yeah, there's quite a few of those. Uh, there's quite a few of those. Um, and I know a few of them. Um, when are we going to get a 14th Doctor? Theoretically, we probably find out some point next year. But uh, obviously, I can't guarantee that because I'm not from the BBC. Hey, Faulty Tardis, how you doing? Hope you're doing okay. Um, all right. Well, I think I've read a lot of things. I just have a MacBook, no PC. Yeah, I've got a PC now. Uh, but I've had it since my 16th birthday, and I turned 18 in July, so I think it's about time. I mean, it was meant to be a birthday present for my 18th, but it's been a bit later uh, for various reasons. Uh, one of them being I wanted to move in the office first. And I know that, by the way, I had someone in the comments on the last stream the other day be like, oh, why do you talk about this stuff? No one cares about the beginning. I've got to build up hype. 
You know what I mean? Like with a live stream, it's different. With a video, you just get straight to the point. With a live stream, you kind of have to build, build some anticipation, get some hype going. You know? Can we get some? What's the cool thing? Pog champs. Say pog champ. Oh yeah, happy happy late birthday. It was um it was a couple of months ago now. But thank you, uh, thank you. I just realised that the Doctor Who Edge Reality is almost out. It is uh, the thirtieth, I believe, is when it comes out. Um, I'm planning on streaming it. Hopefully, um, hype theories. Hypies or something. Um, <laughs> yeah, like it is coming out on the thirtieth. I am hoping to stream it. That's part of the reason why I wanted the new um, the new PC, um, so I could stream it and it, it look all nice and stuff. I did I did inquire to edge the um, the what's they called the maze theory. I asked maze theory like, hey, I reckon I could get a free copy of the game, and, and they didn't. They they left me on red. Um, so maybe they just don't like me. If you want to tweet Maze Theory, feel free. No, I'm just kidding. Don't do that. Or, my, or do. I don't really mind. Um, you know, they're probably not going to care either way. But shall we get into the stuff that's been going on? Um, I agree with Darius. We'll not know who the 40th Doctor is until next year. And that, uh, and that's not a bad thing. I mean, if they're announced uh, quarter one 2022, that means they can start filming by quarter two uh, to three. Yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, I'd just be patient on that front. Um yeah, let's get into like the new stuff, I guess, because there's quite a few things. Uh, so I'm going to scoobble down. Hang on, oh, I'm a bit too big now. Hang on. Swoop. Look at this. Look at this. You don't see that on Mr. Tardis, man. You know, he, probably, he has a button to do it. You know, we, we do it old school here. I probably should just get a button. But, you know, it's more fun to do it like this. You know, it's like, it's like gives the stream a more rough and ready vibe. You know what I mean? I think he's streaming tonight, isn't he? Isn't Mr. Tardis streaming tonight? I think so. I, I, I promise it's not um, F-bot deliberate when we end up streaming the same day. It's just like, well, a bunch of stuff came out last night that I didn't talk about, so I thought I'll do a stream today, and then Mr. Tardis is like, hello everyone, and my name is Mr. Tardis, it's, it's my day to stream today. It's like, well, I'm going to stream as well, so screen now. I'm joking, I love Mr. Tardis. Um, is this a long stream? Probably not particularly. There's not that many news items, um, but there's just enough that I wanted to discuss. Obviously, if you're on Twitter, so you probably know. But let's get into it. We've got a bit of a sad one to start off with. Uh, Only Fools and Horses actor uh, John Chalice, uh, who most famously played Boise, passed away at age 79. Um, this this actually hit me pretty hard because uh, I loved Only Fools and Horses and Gregory Grass at home. Obviously, the Doctor Who connection is that he played uh, Scorby in The Seeds of Death and he voiced um, uh, the... The fifth incarnation of Drax in the Big Finish audio story, The Trouble with Drax. So, um, yeah, that's your Doctor Who connection. But, yeah, John Chalice, absolute legend. Uh, I was absolutely gutted to hear the news that he passed away. Um, if we could get, like, a raft in peace for John Chalice in the chat, uh, I'd really appreciate that. Because it was a very piece of sad news. Um, I was gutted. I really was. Um, but getting into, I guess, a, a very <laughs> dramatic toe jib. What is it, what is it that Tardis calls them? Junctions or whatever, like ah, oh, who 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 has time for all the nerdy lingo? Am I right? Um, uh, we've got um, the Time Fracture did a West End live show. Now I haven't seen this, but um, like obviously you can scroll through there, you can see all the different aliens having musical numbers, uh, which looks kind of bizarre from an outside perspective. It gives me vibes of when um, you know Doctor Who, like there was a Doctor Who Strictly crossover. Um, like, that's the vibe I get from this. It looks like a lot of fun, though. There were Cybermen walking around. As you can see... Are they on stage? Yeah, they are here. You can see them here, along with a bunch of other actors who are doing a bunch of other things. If I had to guess how they were dressed, maybe, like, different incarnations of the Doctor, because that one kind of looks a bit Curse of Fatal Deathy. Um, and, like, obviously the blue people. I'm guessing those are the blue people from the end of the world. They're, like, the, um, staff on that ship. Um... Yeah, so I'm guessing these are like different Doctor incarnations, but that's just a guess. Unless they're just people from different points in time. But yeah, that was the thing that happened on the 18th of September. Uh, it was streamed live. As I said, I didn't see it, but um, it looked like fun, at least. So uh, there is that. And it's always nice to see um, different little things to do with Doctor Who. Oh, also, speaking of different little things to do with Doctor Who, I almost forgot. Um, I'm going to have to be careful now not to leak my address on here. But, hang on. Dun, 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 dun. Dun. I got my ooh. I got my BFI ticket. 
I'm going to the Galaxy 4 screen and how cool is that? Um, yeah, so that's going to be a thing that happens and I'm hoping to do Time Fracture as well. So, um, yeah, I'll see lots of uh, John Charles in the chat, which is lovely to see. Um, so, yeah, like, if you are, if you do end up going, it'll be my first sort of time at a Doctor Who related event. Like, I haven't been to Comic Con in years because, like, COVID happened. Um, but, like, if any of you happen to be going to the BFI screening, um, feel free to say hello, I guess. I've never had that happen before. Uh, but if, you know, you want to say hello, then, then feel free. Um, did you see the Lead 5 Doctor set? I did. Um, I can talk about that, but I, I have got a video coming out discussing that. And it, along with um, character in more depth with a certain very special vote Saxon 07. Hmm? Yeah, that's the thing that's going to happen. So, um, I mean, we can talk about that briefly. I'll just, um, I can get it on screen at, uh, at the end of the stream. Um, uh, oh, I remember leaving my, leaking my address on my Xbox player where I was 9 or 10 years old. Yeah, we all did it. We all did it. No, no, um, no uh, hard feelings there, I guess. Um, so John Bishop spoke about his love for Doctor Who in a recent edition of Doctor Who magazine. Um, I didn't get this one, which is weird because I've got a subscription. For some reason, my subscription just sort of works when it feels like it. Like when I started it, it didn't send me that issue. Um, and now it's not sending me this issue. At least I haven't got it. Actually, no. Tell a lie. I have. I actually, no. I've got a story about that. I've got a story about uh, this Doctor Who magazine issue. Um, yeah, Love Vogue Saxon 07, hell yeah, hell yeah. Um, so I got it, right? I was in bed the morning it was arrived. Don't don't question what time my post gets delivered, you know? It was definitely nine o'clock, wink. Um, I, like, I was in bed and um, my brother brings it in and he decides what would be a great idea with my, my new copy of Doctor Who magazine is chuck it at me. Um, and it actually teared the cover and a bit of the magazine itself. And I haven't quite forgiven him for doing that yet. Um, some people might be call, that, call, it, uh, call that holding a grudge. I call that property damage. Um, he doesn't want to leak his address, but is in Wales somewhere near Cardiff. So. Yeah, I mean, well, I'm in Cardiff and Wales. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, you could probably narrow it down. But, like, you know, I don't want to give you the specifics. Like, to be fair, if my, if my address got leaked, it would kind of be quite funny. Just, like, the on an irony level. Like, <laughs> the guy who loves leaks got his address leaked. That's kind of funny. Um, have you watched The Morning Show with Jennifer Anderson and Reese Witherspoon? I don't think I had. Yeah, my post gets to live in any time between 9 and 2. Yeah, me too. And it was definitely closer to 9 and not 2. Uh, definitely. Um, what other shows do I watch? All sorts. All sorts. Uh, I just got done watching... Um, Man the High Castle on Amazon Prime. That was really good. Uh, if you, especially if you like your alternate history stuff. Um, it's free if you've got Prime. Uh, would, give, would recommend. It's basically what would happen if the Axis powers took over America in one World War II. It's really good stuff. Um, would recommend. Great cast. Uh, and yeah. Um, me driving to Therese's house. Be like, I'm about to get famous. <laughs> I don't know about that. I'm not even that famous. Like, oh, it's self. I am... Um, I met up with any of you know Rebecca TV. I met her on on the other day, and she was lovely. Uh, so that was good fun. Who's the new showrunner? We don't know yet. Could be anyone. You know, could be me. We don't. You don't know. Like if it was, would you be able to tell? Uh, I see a lot of YouTube videos that say a rapper's phone number got leaked. Yeah, I, it happens all the time with like public figures. But like you know, I don't want my address getting leaked just yet. Um, but yeah, next bit of item on the news. So he was speaking in Doctor Who magazine. The 30th Doctor and Yaz are to welcome a new face to the TARDIS later this year as actor and comedian John Bishop joins the cast as Dan. Doctor Who magazine caught up with John Bishop for the latest issue where he discusses growing up with Doctor Who, shooting the new series, and answers questions from the TARDIS tin. Read, exclusive uh, read an exclusive extract of the interview below. I just had a malfunction then. Uh, John Bishop shares his earliest memories of watching Doctor Who. When you're a kid, I guess it depends on what Doctor you see the most when you're growing up. John Pertwee was my first incarnation of the Doctor, and so was my introduction to Doctor Who. And then I stayed with it during the Tom Baker phase. Uh, that was when I watched the show the most. I remember the transition from John Pertwee to Tom Baker. I remember watching that Regeneration episode. I didn't believe he could do it. I'm just wondering what year that would have been and how old I was. It would have been 1974... 
Uh, yeah, there you go, perfect time. I was eight years old, a great age to see this incredible transformation, and then also see the differences between the two doctors in their char in the character and look. But I got it. I remember understanding that it was the same person. Uh, the second and final part of Black Power, a brand new one. Okay, that's just other stuff. So yeah, interesting little thing there. Obviously, uh, I think it's inevitable that like if you've grown up in Britain, you've at least heard of Doctor Who, even if it's just been on in the background or something. Um, like obviously, you know, even though I'm the only fam, I'm the only person in my family who really cares about Doctor Who in any meaningful way. Like you know, it's always one of those things that people just know about, even if it's just oh that bloke in the scarf, isn't it? Isn't it cockle, you know? Um, so yeah, very cool to hear him share his memories of Doctor Who there. Uh, is Evil of Dogs out on Monday? I believe so. Yeah, yeah. British. British. Yeah, British. Um, speaking of John Bishop, he has officially wrapped filming um, on Doctor Who Series 13. Uh, if you can hear in this short video clip. I doubt I'll be copyright struck for this because it's on his Instagram. Unless he has, like, hardened... Instagram laws, um, like, you know, that prevent people from sharing his Instagram, but I doubt it. I mean, it's shared by Doctor Who Production News. I did download this just in case I couldn't find it anywhere else, but, like, this works just as well. Uh, is my general media on? Yes, it is. Uh, so here you go. Well, um, that's a wrap. That's the last day on Doctor Who completed. Um, I'm just leaving the lot now. Um, nearly a year of my life and I wasn't expecting to do it at all and it's been absolutely brilliant. So um, you meant, you'll see there he mentioned uh, not expecting to do it. Um, that's why I don't think it's very likely that he'll be doing uh, any further series. Obviously we know he's in the, uh, the specials, but I don't think he'll be staying on for a new show in it because he didn't even expect to do this series. It was kind of an impromptu thing because uh, they approached him and I believe he declined it first time around due to it clashing with his tool. But uh, due to COVID and perhaps some of them being cancelled or reworked, he was able to make it work. But I don't think they're going to be able to do that the second time. And plus, I think a new showrunner will probably want a complete clean slate. So yeah, I don't think John Bishop will carry on beyond the centenary. Really, so I wouldn't have swapped it for anything. I know you haven't seen it yet. Uh, but it'll... John Bishop as well make a great point there. You know, the idea that um, we haven't actually seen it yet. And he's already rapping. That's kind of why I don't like um, one series companions generally. Like the thing is, in the RTD era, it was different because they sort of made little subsequent appearances uh, since and like sort of following. Um, whereas with like Bill, for example, and like with Dan now, they feel like they're you know, here for such a short period of time. Uh, and I feel as though, especially with uh, with Dan as well, he's only going to get nine episodes total, and a lot of that's not going to be focused on him. I just feel as though. You know, I'm not a big fan of one series companions, but then again, I feel like by the time a second series is over, I'm kind of getting itchy feet and ready to see someone else. So, I mean, it's it's a tough balance to, to, um, to strike, I suppose. I mean, you know, people can't really stay a series and a half. Um, I, I guess it depends on the companions as well, because, I mean, Amy and Rory's dynamic, I feel like that developed in such an organic way that I thought that they were well explored. But, like, someone like Clara, for example, she stayed, what... Uh, two and a half series all told um, and I think by the end of series eight which would be her first full series people were like yeah we're sort of ready for you to go now. so I guess it depends on the character uh, but yeah I, I do find it weird that he's already like finished and we haven't even seen it yet honestly it's been amazing everyone's been great I'm so grateful to them and I've also got loads of great material from it so there you go that's um, he's basically making a joke at the end there talking about all the great material uh, he, he's he got, and, and you can guarantee that um, a lot of like what he's done on Doctor Who will no doubt be, um, you know, great jokes in his stand-up routines. Uh, wish him all the best with that. When do you think we'll get a trailer? Uh, pff, I couldn't tell you at this point. I honestly thought, you know, the 16th with the final Doctor thing, I thought that might be a good time. And then Strictly came out, we didn't get one then. So at this point, I've given up even trying to guess. Uh, I think maybe now... You might have to wait till October, because honestly, I don't really know where else it could slot in. But, uh, but yeah, the Rani should return. Eh, you know, I'm not really one of those people who's itching for it. But I, I did like Stu Bagful's video on it, where it's just like, just bring her back, so we, you know, stop having to speculate about it. Um, 
So yeah, that's that. Uh, and then the main uh, event of the day. Oh no, there's one more thing. So obviously, um, you'll you'll have seen if you've seen my previous video. Um, Doctor Who BBC special filming in Grange Gardens, Cardiff, uh, near Grange Town. Uh, a film crew recorded scenes for the Doctor Who BBC centenary special in Grange Garden, Cardiff, Wales, on September 20th. Some photos of John Bishop and Bradley Walsh at the, at the filming have surfaced. It began at the construction of the TARDIS prop at the location, um, and then you can see like all the different tweets there, which we went over in the last video. If you haven't seen uh, that video, um, someone if there's a mod in here, can they link it? Um, but uh, yeah, so that's that. But the bit I haven't spoken about yet, but you know, Mr. Mr. Bloody Confused Adipose released a video like ten minutes later in his like in his uni comedy. This this is a um, this is a um, what you call it like a recreation of that video, right? His ASMR video. Hang on. Hello, everyone. It's, it's uh, hello, YouTube and people of the interwebs. Welcome back to another video where today uh, there's been a new Doctor Who Series 13 leak. John Bishop is coming back to, to Doctor Who or something. Uh, yeah, that was basically the Confused Adipose video. Oh, look at me, I'm in the Confused Adipose, I'm in uni. Sorry, I'm just bullying the Confused Adipose at this point. Um, someone should make a compilation of every time we've insulted each other. It's probably been a few times. I mean, it's probably more times privately than it is publicly, but you know. Um, yeah, point was though, I haven't spoken about these um, these pictures yet. Now this article is from the Daily Mail, and for that I can only apologise. You can tell the website's struggling when there's more ads on the website than there is actual content. Um, but, uh, Jenny Whitaker was spotted uh, manning the TARDIS for her final instalments as Doctor Who. Uh, it's the Doctor, you know, don't mean to be that guy or anything, but... Uh, in Cardiff on Monday. Uh, the 39-year-old actress and the show's first female doctor confirmed in July that she was leaving the sci-fi program after four years. Her departure will play out across the three-part special with the first episode airing in autumn 2022 and Monday scenes took the crew to Grange Gardens, Grange Town, where Jodie looked right at her home uh, back in the iconic time machine. Uh, I'll go over the images in more detail on the next article, but um, for the majority of the uh, captured filming moments, Jodie remained in the TARDIS, which outwardly appears as a British police box. Really? I, I didn't know that. I don't know whether you did. It's a bit of a little little piece of known trivia there. Uh, the West Yorkshire native, who described her four, uh, four years stint at manning the TARDIS as the best job I've ever had, also stopped to chat with crew members in between takes. Uh, you can see some more images there. And then Jodie was first uh, said to have made a decision in January with reports at the time discussing a fall in viewership. I mean, again, like, that always happens. Like, we're no lower now than we were in the Capaldi era, but, you know, like, I mean, I think Series 13 could be lower, like, the lowest one so far, but I don't think it'll be by loads. I just think that, like, the lack of, like, any substantial marketing could lead to, like, a lower number, but it's not going to be like astronomically lower like some people make out here like um it was reported that Jodie and Shona Chris Jimmel who is also walking away from the show had attracted just half the audience during their pairing compared to Russell T Davis led uh David Tennant forced version of the show did yeah but that was like 2008 like TV is very different and I know that like obviously yes it is and you know there are shows that do you know as well as that show did but I feel like it's disingenuous to say um, it got half as much of the audience. I mean, Series 11 wasn't the case. Uh, what we felt with was one of the, the highest uh, viewed episodes of the revived run. So slightly disingenuous. Yes, it did drop off. Um, but again, it was always going to. Um, the Telegraph reported at the beginning of the year that the episodes were drawing in fewer than 5 million viewers. I mean, it wasn't just the Telegraph that reported that. It was kind of just... You kind of just look up the ratings. Sorry, this Daily Mail article is just rubbing out the wrong way. <laughs> Uh, the paper added that such numbers are not dissimilar to when the show was axed in 1989. They are, though, because that was three, and these are closer to, like, five or six. So they are different numbers. Um, also, like, the context is completely different. Like, the, the higher-ups in the BBC publicly said how much they hated Doctor Who in, in the 1980s. Like, outwardly, they hated it. Whereas now... Well, yes, you could argue it's not the tour de force that it once was. It's certainly not reviled by anyone particularly, at least publicly. Um, the context is totally different. 
the season finale of Series 12 had a total audience of 4.6 million, making it the lowest Doctor Who's ever had. Um, I think it is. Yeah, I think that is right. I'm not too sure there. Series 12 was an average of 5.4 million. Peter Crowley, who preceded Jenny Rick. Why is this the only thing that they talk about? I'm sorry, this is like another side little tangent here, but like, this is about them filming, but why... This is what I mean, like, they can't just talk about the filming, they have to talk about, by the way, Doctor Who's not doing as well as it used to. Did you know that? Like, no, you have to... Why can't you just say, oh, they were filming for the final episode? There you go. I guess it's just not juicy enough. You know, like, with these articles, they've got to paint a narrative that everything's terrible, you know? It was also, uh, I've already read that, uh, the season finale, doo -doo -doo -doo. Peter Capaldi, who preceded Jodie with Chris the Time Lord, offers words of comfort to her following the news of her Doctor Who departure, insisting she's capable of enduring the emotional turmoil Matt Smith suffered when he left the role. That's a weird sentence to me, like, almost as if to say that Peter Capaldi didn't suffer any either, but okay. The actor 63 played the Doctor between 2008 and 2017, following the footsteps of Matt Smith at 38, who took on the part from 2010 to 2013. Why? Why? Okay. Peter recalled his experience of seeing Matt depart the hit BBC show in a bid to offer uh, Jodie some support. Okay. Telling the Radio Times, well, Jodie's lovely and amazing. I'm sure she can handle all of that without any advice from me. She's brilliant. Okay. A lot of unnecessary fluff, but I guess that's inevitable with um, traditional media, I guess. Like, I just don't see what was relevant about the ratings thing when it's just about them filming. Like, it just seems very, very um, unnecessary, I suppose. But we can go more in depth on the images on uh, Wales Online here. They've got the reason I picked Wales Online is they've got bigger versions of the images. And also being a Welsh boy, you know, national pride and all of that. Uh, the best behind the scenes photos from Doctor Who is Jodie Whittaker and Bradley Walsh are spotted filming new series in Cardiff Park. Uh, comedian John Bishop was also on set in Grangetown. So this is the first in which you can see Jodie uh, excitedly stepping out of the TARDIS here. Um, uh, it says that Jodie Whittaker was seen posing in the iconic TARDIS as filming for her last series as the Doctor got underway. A Cardiff Park was turned into a film set as the stars of Doctor Who were spotted shooting a new series of the sci-fi drama. Actually, again, not to be that guy, but it was one-off special. Um, you know, I, don't mean to, I don't mean to, well, I don't mean to well actually uh, this article, but that kind of is what's happening. You know, they're not filming Series 13, Series 13 is in the can, they're filming for the centenary. But, you know, my guys don't. Uh, Jodie Wicker, who plays the Doctor, was on set in Grange Gardens, Grange Town, alongside uh, John Bishop and Bradley Walsh, as they film scenes for what is thought to be the show's centenary special. Correction again, it's not the show's centenary special, it's the BBC's. Seen a lot of confusion around this in my comment section. The centenary special, where we refer to the centenary special, is a centenary that's supposed to celebrate the BBC's 100th anniversary, not Doctor Who's. So uh, anyone was confused, hopefully that clears that up. Um, Walsh, who, I mean, I, to be fair, that last bit could have just been um, poor phrasing on that part there. Walsh, who departed the show earlier this year, is to be replaced as one of the Doctor's companions by comedian John Bishop, but the chaste host is looking to set, is set to return for this episode. And I'll say it like this, when um, when this basically came out on Twitter, was it last night, that, um, that uh, Bradley Walsh was coming back, I feel like I somewhat felt like, alright, like, I feel like that was the general mood, like, don't really, some people are excited. But it almost feels like he hasn't been gone long enough for us to miss him yet, because, like, the most recent episode, for us, as an audience, still has him in it. Um, so, like, I, I didn't feel an awful lot towards him going back. Obviously, it's interesting, and it does, um, at least, uh, you know, it, uh, you know, it makes it so that the centenary is going to be, like, a, it's going to have something from the past. You know, people speculated that there was going to be a companion from the past in the centenary, and that did turn out to be true. However, it was more of the immediate past than uh, perhaps some people thought it was. Um, but nevertheless, it is celebrated the show's past in some form, so that was correct. Um, but yeah, like, I just didn't feel much towards it, because it feels like we haven't had time to, like, miss or care about the fact that he's gone yet, but you yeah. know. Um, Manu Gill, who plays fellow companion Yasmin Khan on the show, was also spotted filming outside the iconic TARDIS. Uh, the Doctor Who film crew are no strangers to Cardiff, having shot many uh, series of the Butch Love show in the Welsh capital, but a local cafe owner was still left starstruck after Walsh and Bishop both stopped off in a cafe for a drink. 
I can't imagine the conversations between those two. It must be a very, must be a very fun conversation. Uh, Zara Ali, the owner of the Hideout Cafe in Grange Garden, said, I thought they were just taking a few shots of the TARDIS. N- but no, Bradley Walsh came in, John Bishop and Jodie Whittaker. You could read more about her chat with the stars here. Where? Doesn't say where you could... Oh, right. This is just directly underneath. Okay. Alright, so this is the one that I find most interesting. This image is the one that I find the most interesting. And the reason I do is that if you look at it, I'm probably... Here we go. You can see here that, like, he's... By the looks of it, the camera guy here... Let's just call him Dave for um, for, for simplicity's sake. Not saying that's your name, Dave, but we'll just say that it is. We can see that Dave here is probably shooting what looks like a dramatic close-up on Jodie's face. This has very much stolen this journeys and vibes where the Doctor drops off with their companions or probably even more accurately something like uh, End of Time where um, Ten obviously visits all his companions and he gives them a look like, yeah, this is it sort of thing. That's the vibe I get from this image uh, for certain. You know, maybe this is the last time they, they um, that Jodie drops off her companions. I will say, like, you know, if... If it turns out that none of the companions die or anything, or, like, nothing happens to them, I am going to be a bit disappointed because I feel as though these companions haven't been put through an awful lot, uh, and I'd have kind of liked to have seen more conflict and more, I don't know, just them put through the ringer a bit more, and I feel like if they all walk into the sunset happy, um, I'm going to feel a little bit, like, oh, wasted potential there, I guess, but... You can see there again, Jodie is there with those um, sunglasses that she's worn on set before, I think. It's weird that they haven't made it into an episode beyond... Were they the same ones that uh, that she gave Graham in the Ghost Monument? I'm not 100% sure. Wouldn't surprise me an awful lot, though, because uh, Doctor Who's known for its reuse of props. Um, but yeah, uh, and then there's one of John Bishop here, which I don't think I've seen yet, but there's not much to glean from that other than the guy wearing this very trendy Doctor Who shirt. Look at that. Uh, this one, this one is like the the most probably important one, I suppose. Like you know, this one directly confirms that Graham and uh, Dan, or uh, Bradley Walsh and John Bishop's characters, will be interacting in the centenary special. They will meet. Uh, that will be a fun thing for definite. I look forward to seeing how they do it. Are they going to do it the more Davies like? Uh, the Rose and Sarah Jane approach where they hate each other or the more um, Martha and Donna approach where they sort of are really chummy with one another. I would see more of it like a second option. I could see them getting on really well. Uh, and here you can see a second one. Um, here you can see, of course, uh, Band of Gil uh, also on t- I believe that's a new costume for, for Yaz. I'm not sure. Uh, if, any, if, if anyone can tell whether she's worn that very specific yellow jacket, feel free to let me know. But um, Sorry, my throat is very bad, I should say. Um, I've had a little bit of a thing, um, like a bug, where my throat's gone really dry. So um, apologies for that. And then you can see here, this one also is interesting to me because it, it sort of adds to the theory that I mentioned earlier, that the Doctor is dropping off Yaz here. That's the vibe I get. Like, And you can see here... Jodie looks kind of, not sad, but kind of forlorn, if you know what I mean. She looks kind of a bit sort of gutted, I guess. Uh, And that would make sense if it was, like, the last time that she sort of is seeing her companion. Um, Again, though, like, I do hope that there is at least some change between now and this. Like, I'm not saying that they need to die. I just need, I just want them to be put through some stuff, you know what I mean? Um, But, yeah, and then... Have this one where Jodie's being directed, this one where Jodie looks happy outside the TARDIS. Another version of that shot that we mentioned earlier, but this time uh, from from farther away. Um, I definitely think that this is a dramatic thing. So if I had to guess the sequence of events here, I would say... So, hang on. I can't obviously guess these bits, but this bit here. I guess that this bit comes first. So, um, so Yaz is talking to the Doctor, like they just dropped off. Nice having you aboard, you know, maybe get a scene similar to, like, around to the UK. Um, and then, you know, Yaz is like, you're the greatest person I've ever met, whatever. 
um, all that. Thank you for having me. And the doctor's like, no, thank you. Yes, for being here or something. I'm just paraphrasing. I'm just making stuff up. But then she walks away and then we get a shot of Jodie looking really sad as Yaz walks off into the distance. That is my guess as to how this scene plays out. If that does turn out to be true, come back to this stream in what? Uh, when to come out? Like autumn of next year? And if I'm right, then you have to give me your bank details. No, I'm joking. Uh, but you do let me know if I was right. Uh, future diaries will be very happy if he was. But uh, that is all the images. Very interesting stuff. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on the images. How, how are we feeling about all that? We're talking about the images and how um, we think it might um, play out, I guess. Uh, by the way, Therese, can you check your comments on your community tab of your previous stream? Community tab of the previous, do you mean just the comments or like the live thing or or, or just my community tab? Like which, which bit? I don't know, and I will. Uh, I won't do it on stream though, I'll do it at uh, a uh, later time, but I definitely will. Um, this could all happen in a parallel universe and not our own. Yeah, I could do, but I do get the vibe that this is kind of like the final sort of... This is like, this seems very climactic to me. These shots, they don't scream beginning of a plot. I mean, I know that obviously you could say the same about Arachnids and that kind of is the beginning of a plot. But like, I don't know, man. These shots just don't seem like the ones that you do at the beginning of like an alternate universe thing. This seems like the end to me. Who remembers Dave the Dalek? Oh God, Dalek Dave. That's not a name I've heard in a long time. Uh, I do remember him though. Um, he's probably in my basement somewhere. Um, Bradley Walsh and John Bishop seeds could, should be funny if Chibnall wrote it well. Uh, it would be good if Chibnall got uh, Bradley and John to improvise most of their dialogue. Hopefully that is what happens, I'll be honest. Um, do we know who the 40th Doctor is going to be? No, I, as I said, it'd probably be next year now. Um, but, you know, like, you'd have to assume that if they're filming her final episode, then surely... If they're filming Jodie's final episode, then surely they've got somebody waiting in the wings. Who, though, I'm not sure, but... Doctor Who Disney crossover? Oh, God, I hope not. Uh, I posted on my Twitter, like, a while back, uh, some Disney XD trailers for Doctor Who, when it was airing on Disney XD, like a deal that they made, and it's genuinely atrocious. Uh, do you reckon Ryan will be back? Yes, thank you for reminding me, uh, Adam Grayson. This is something I want to talk about. So, if you notice, there's one key figure who's missing from all of these filming uh, images, and that is Tozen Cole's Ryan Sinclair. And I'm not convinced that he is coming back, or at least perhaps not in the conventional way, because he's filming in America. And if I'm being completely honest, right, like, from the word go, Tozen Cole just seemed kind of done with the whole thing. Um, um, he just seemed kind of done from... Like, with the show, he seemed kind of like... I don't know, you know what I mean? Like, series 11, 12, he just seemed really bored. Um, and when he left, it was like, I don't know, I kind of got the vibe that he wouldn't want to come back. You know what I mean? Um, so I'm not convinced he will. That, and he's filming in America now, I think, with um, Jamie Fox on a new show. I think. So, um, you know, he's going to be busy. I think a way they could shoot him in, though, if they really wanted to um, get him in somehow, is they could sort of pull a Maria from um, Sarah Jane Adventures, where they have him pop up on a computer or something. We well, you know he's a YouTuber. Would make sense for him to pop up in that way. Um, but yeah, I don't think uh, he'll pop up fully in, in the special. I think he might make a cameo there. Just so that Chibnall could say that he technically did get all his companions in one episode. Tharys, did you get banned from the game? You? I don't think so. I just haven't played in a while. Uh, is the wooden puppet not able to appear? Oh god. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of Tozen Cole's actor. I'm gonna be honest. Like, I know that um, you know, apparently he's a good actor in other things. Um, but like, I just didn't see it in Doctor Who, man. Like, maybe it was maybe he was just bored with the material, which to be fair, I kind of get. But like, I don't know. I just didn't really get the vibe that he was that. Enamoured with it, if you know what I mean. Fairies, they could pull the Jenna Coleman and green screen him in. Yeah, that's a possibility as well. I mean, we've we've seen it happen before. Uh, Sharon, in, Sharon D. Clark appeared as a vision in Revolution of the Daleks. So, um, stranger things have happened, certainly. 
Uh, turns it was kind of weak in Doctor. Yeah, I do agree. Like, it's, it, it just didn't seem that bothered. Uh, spin off called 30 Bad and Red. What, like a spin off with, with Maria? Or just a, a Sarah Jane spin off? I would be down for Sarah Jane spin off, but I doubt you'll see those characters again anytime soon. Uh, Tozer and Cole admitted he didn't even know Jodie was the Doctor when he was reading scenes uh, at his audition. Don't think he's the biggest fan of the show. He probably just used it for his career. But you know what, though? Like, I don't, I'm not one of these people who thinks that anyone involved in the show needs to be a massive fan. But I just think that, like, he just didn't enjoy the material. And that's fair enough. I could be wrong, of course. I'm just speculating on that behalf. I want to make that clear. But, like, I don't know. I just kind of got the vibe that he was sort of done by the time, like, you know, if you watch him behind the scenes as well, he just keeps very, very not interested. <laughs> like, I just... Hang on, let me see if I can find a behind the scenes thing, actually. Just to see if I can prove my point slightly. Um, what, what were they called? Like, access all areas or something? I'm probably going to get copyright struck for this. BBC, if you copyright struck that, I swear to God, you know, I've got 100 people in here, you know? Like, I've got people watching. Please, please don't. Please don't nuke the stream. I, I would, wouldn't be very appreciative of that. It wouldn't be very pog, poggers, actually. Um, that is what the, all the cool kids say. Um... Doctor Who, I believe it's called Access All Their Areas, right? Isn't that what it's called? Let's see if I can just find him at some point during this. Hopefully, as I say, they don't claim me for this because it's not even like the show. Hi guys, my name. Shush. I need to skip to Toast and Cole. To be fair, this is episode one, so I mean, maybe he's a bit more like excited here. Uh, wait, there we go. Here we go. I'll just see if I can play a clip. Bill. Those push-ups, you know, <laughs> they're going on great, you know. <laughs> yeah, I think I'll use the joints up there. Um, I'll see if I can go forward. See if I can, see if I can, see if I can make my point anywhere. Oh, he's barely in the rest of it. Okay, try episode two. Is there a playlist? There's a playlist. Okay. It's so weird to me that like series series eleven came out like three years ago. That's bizarre. Like yeah, 20, 18, 19, 20. Yeah, there's three years. Yeah. I am right. Of course I'm right. Um, wow, you can see a massive view drop between episode one and episode two as well. Look at that. It goes from 172,000 to about 72,000 very, very quickly. Uh, there's, there's, you notice as well in these things, um, Mad Dip and Tozen are always together. I still think the original idea was to have um, Yaz and Ryan become a thing. Because they like the promotional stuff. You always thought it was like, together. Um, and like in series 11 they were always together, but I think it got changed due to like the popularity of the Thousand thing, so. We basically made um, a pact because we'd complain about how cold it was. See, look at, just look at this man. I just don't get the man, like, the vibe that the man wants yeah, to be South there. Africa, no one... You know what I mean? Like, he just looks so done. That's just the vibe. Darius, do you think, uh, oh, the chat's going a bit quick. Do you think it's possible that we could see a cliffhanger regeneration where we don't see the next Doctor? Certainly possible. I've just noticed that the, uh, the viewers have um, completely collapsed. So either the BBC has nuked this or people just left. But, um, yes, I mean, I do think it's possible. Although for me personally, I kind of like it if we just got, um, what you call it? The, the episode itself, I guess. Like... Like, I, I, what I'm trying to say is I, I would rather we just see the regeneration fully in the episode because I just need the security that um, there's going to be a new Doctor, essentially, because there's some uncertainty around that. I will nuke the BBC if they come around. Uh, my man, oh, yeah, oh, God, they're going to probably assume that I'm, like, threatening them with nuclear violence now. Oh, my God going to be a threat to, to BBC security. Do you think that Chibnall will bring back any big classic monster like the Sea Devils? Not that I want to uh, start that rumor again. In the sense, here special. I'm reckoning it could be Zygons because whenever we see like Zygons in New Who, it's always something to do with unit. And way back, if you lot remember, there was like a image of a box that had this, the, the, uh, the Zygon logo on it. So I would not be surprised if, um, you know, it was then, but yeah, it's possible, certainly. Uh, 
I know this isn't who related, but how do you feel about uh, the new disabled uh, speed, uh, CBBS, CBBS presenter? I'm honestly glad we're getting more representation. Completely agree. Good on, good on the guy. You know, like um, you know, I hope that you know the uh, the online stuff hasn't been too bad. I haven't looked into it too much, but um, you know, congrats to him. You know, good on the guy. Um, as I say, you know, um, I, I think disabled representation is incredibly important. Um, and I, you know, I like to hope that in some way. I contribute to that within this community. I know it's a very different community. It's much smaller. You know, it's nowhere near that level of a gig. You know, like, who would let me on TV? But, you know, it's just, yeah, like, it's great stuff. Very important. And I'm glad that it's happened, certainly. Uh, oh, the chat goes so quick. Uh, yeah, they might not have decided yet. Possibly. Who do you want the next Doctor to be? Obviously, I've got my uh, my choices, but, like, they're, they're too numerous to count. Uh, Serial level is the worst. I do kind of agree. Um, God, I hope they don't make Thousand Men a thing. Yeah, me too. There's, there's hope that they don't, they don't, but I've just got a feeling that they will. Uh, do you remember, remember when Kara's threatened to punch Kapala's doctor uh, so hard that he'd regenerate? Uh, should Dan make a civil threat to the 30 doctor? That, that was weird then, and it would be weird now regardless. Like, it's. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't punch, it was slap, if I remember correctly, but still, yeah, I, I didn't like that line. Uh, but no, um, I wouldn't. I don't like that in any context, you know. Sergeant Benton is still alive. Is he? The actor or in, in universe? I'm not really sure. But um, if so, yeah, they could bring it back. Do you feel they'll do? Do you fear they'll suddenly end the show? I don't think it will happen yet. But what I have said is, I think if the next era of the show struggles, then I think we're in sort of dodgy water territory then. I think we're okay at the minute, but I think, you know, the next era perhaps is on the same level or not, on this, or less than, than it, where it is now in terms of its, like, cultural significance and popularity, which is a really tough metric to, to measure. The BBC only know for certain. But, like, if we're at the same level we are now in, like, three years' time, I could see that maybe being a thing. Do you listen to Big Finish audios? Very rarely, but I do. Um, I don't find them the easiest things to listen to, but I do enjoy the ones, I have enjoyed the ones that I do listen to. I'd like to listen to more, but I, I struggle without, um, I tend to struggle with media if there isn't a visual stimulus to it. So, um, yeah, I guess that's my long belated answer to that, but yes, I do. Um, I reckon we might get a War Games, uh, like finale, uh, with 14's in depth, in identity of history, and maybe the Doctor X will do it. That'd be cool. It's like different. Um, like I say, we haven't seen that since, um, since uh, you know, second Doctor, as you mentioned. Mr. Tardis is the, the big finish YouTuber. Yeah, I guess he did do, um, he did speak about, what was it, like a Peter Davison audio or something? So yeah, I guess. I, I know that Davis, he tends to talk about them a lot as well, broke, on Broke Cannon and stuff, so. Um, Jamie Matheson could be a good show, right? Yeah, pro yeah, probably. I don't know whether he'd do it though, but yeah. I don't think it'll be cancelled, uh, rested, uh, whilst they consider their options. Thing is, rested, to me, though, it kind of just seems like a more polite way of saying cancelled. If a show is, like, indefinitely rested, to me, that's just saying cancelled. You know what I mean? Like, they've got certain words to, um, to, uh, say these things, uh, and rested's kind of one of them. Oh, oh, we'll give it a rest, you know? It'll come back eventually. That's what they'll say they won't. When Doctor Who, because eventually it will always have to be cancelled at some point, because, you know, nothing lasts forever. Um, but, like, if it does get cancelled, um, like, well, I say, it, it, when it eventually does, you know, they won't say it's cancelled as such. They'll just say, oh, we're resting it for a bit. We're trying to get the formula right. You know, they'll, they'll, they'll there's PR words, you know what I mean? Um, RMG, I'm not going to answer that just because it's a bit of a personal question to, to answer on a live stream, but, um, I, uh, yeah, just, just for, uh, personal, personal reasons, uh, technically Doctor Who was never cancelled, it was, uh, it just wasn't renewed until 2004, yeah, but, like, come on, in, in the minds of most people, if a show is not on for, like, 10 years, it's cancelled, you know what I mean, like, even if, even if they don't say it, like, that's basically what that is. You know what I mean? Even if it's technically not the case. You know what I mean? Like, it is still sort of basically being cancelled. 
Uh, someone's gonna take that video out of context and be like, oh, you said it's being cancelled now. That's just not what I said, but you know, someone will do it. They're already kind of saying that though with the getting the new formula right and bringing in a new generator. Yeah! But the difference now though is that I feel like it would be silly to cancel it because they've just done like all the stuff with like time fracture. We're in a very different place as to what we were in the 80s. You know, like it's still too profitable for them to cancel. I've said this to friends before, and this is how I feel on it. It's too popular to cancel, but it's not popular enough to justify expanding any further. That's where we're at right now. It's why you won't, probably won't get spin off anytime soon, but it'll still exist. That makes sense. I could see the new era running with a reduced episode count. Um, I think COVID will be like the sort of scapegoat that they use to justify that carrying on. Um, but yeah, like I could see that becoming the new thing. Uh, the BBC definitely valued Doctor Who as a brand at least, uh, more than they did when it was cancelled in the 80s. Exactly. Um, I have seen the new B&M figure leak. Should I talk about that? I can talk about that. I mean, I do talk about it in an upcoming video, but um, we'll talk about it again, I guess, very briefly. Uh, I think it was on a friend of mine's account. So on Jude Piggity Breaks account. By the way, if you haven't already followed me on Twitter, at TheriesYT, be very much appreciative. Um, oh, someone saw Jacob Anderson. There we go. That's something cool. Didn't even know that, but there you go. Uh, BNM Figure League, BNM Figure League, BNM Figure League, BNM Figure League. I did download it at some point, but I just, I don't want to go through like my files, it'd probably be quicker to just scroll down. Here we go, here we go. So here's the new uh, B&M figure, like it's a five doctors uh, set, you've got a third doctor, or a shock side man, and a raster warrior robot. I'll be honest, as much as like, it is cool to get a five doctor set, um, like, it is kind of a basic one because, you know, the Raster Warrior Robot's just your average, like, figure mold with, like, you know, blank ha blank head. Um, Earth Drop Side Man, again, has been re-released multiple times. And a third Doctor just with a slightly different outfit to match the three. Cool. Oh, sorry. Cool. But, like, I don't know. I just wish they'd get a bit more creative with, like, the figures is my kind of takeaway. Like, I'm not saying that, like, everything needs a new mold every time, but, like... You know, I just feel for, like, the kids who like this show, who, like, you know, like the new stuff. It's like, what is there for them? You know what I mean? Uh, do you think Chibnall will be writing uh, all of Series 13 and uh, the three specials? I don't think he'll write all of Series 13, but the specials, I think he probably will. Or at least the final one for definite, and probably the Dalek one as well. So yeah, probably all the specials, is my guess. But variants, Thary's variants. I think about variants are great, as long as there's other things to accompany them. Like, I, I, I'm a sucker for variants. I'll take some variants. I love collecting, but like, you know, there's just not any new stuff to accompany it, you know what I mean? Will you be doing reviews when the series comes back? Yeah, that's an interesting question. I think what I'm planning to do is I'm probably going to stream my thoughts live and then cut each segment. I'll, I'll do it in like segments and I'll cut each segment up and then I'll make it a separate video. So that way, um, obviously you can watch it live as soon as, as soon as the episode ends, you can watch me live um, th talking about it. Uh, I'll also pre-record before that a, um, a live reaction, uh, which will be just me um, reacting to it, cut up all the good bits. Um, but in the in the the live stream itself, the way I'm planning on uh, setting it up is uh, basically you'll have the first part be my my basic review. I'll probably make some notes. Um, then like you'll get like a sort of a period of like a, a breakdown part where it's like I go through each part of the episode, and then you'll get just random chat about other parts of the episode, you know, and hopefully it'll be a decent thing, but, like, you should get, like, all parts of, like, a review that you would want relatively quickly. That's the idea. Um, if ratings continue to fall for the next year of Doctor Who, 
Uh, will uh, the next year of Doctor Who will be delayed by a couple of years? Uh, all they can do, uh, already concerning that a new show has been announced. I mean, maybe, but like, I think the whole point of them doing a new era would be to get the viewing figures back up. You know, like, that's the whole idea. The rest of Warrior Robot is new, but what I'm saying is, it's just, you know, it's just your average like male body sculpt with like a blank head. It's not a particularly difficult figure to do. Um, they should have made it a cyber leader, yeah, I suppose, but even that would just be uh, changing the colour of the handles, right? Unless they did the cyber controller, but I don't think he was in the Five Doctors. Season 17 is coming to Blu-ray soon. Yeah, I did cover that leak on a previous stream. Uh, the hell actually also really rad individuals explaining stuff. Diaries, I tried. You know what? I'll take it. I'll take I'll take the ac acronym. Uh, when I can. Um, I don't watch Everdale, but I, I did last night. Uh, and by luck, Carl Baker was it? Yeah, he is. Uh, which was... I haven't, I haven't watched it. I saw a clip. I think, actually, it was Trilby who boosted it. It was very funny. Um, just completely out of context. But, yeah. He is, in fact, in Everdale. Uh, if Graham is back, how will you feel if his cancer is back as a plot point? Um, I'd like them to address it, even if it's not back necessarily, because I feel like it would be weird not to. Um, don't worry, Tyrus, you'll get your ad, your earth shock, in, you'll get your ad and in your, your earth shock being upset, so, yeah. I think, uh, having, I think that having Series 13 being all one story could potentially really benefit in one of the biggest problems with this era, especially Series 12, is a total, uh, inconsistency between... Um, arc and non-arc based apps. Yeah, true. Uh, one big finish is character to cross over into the new show, Frobisher, Bernice, or any builds, uh, the Eleven. Um, big finish characters. Uh, I guess Evelyn, if they were going to do something with the Sixth Doctor, but like, I haven't really got many. I'd like to see if... I I could talk about, like, um, big finish stories I'd like to see adapted. I'd like to see an adaptation... Like, because we've seen um, adaptations of Virgin New Adventure stuff before. Uh, so I don't think, and obviously bits of, like, Big Finish be adapted, because obviously you saw Mary Shelley and the Cybermen in Series 12. I'd like to see an adaptation of Davros uh, for the um, the show, where he basically takes over a company and just, like, starts running it as a giant war machine. Uh, and it gives you a lot of insight into um, Davros as a character. I think that would be a really good episode. And it wouldn't even require any Daleks. So, um, yeah. That's something I'd like to see adapted from Big Finish. I hope that answers your question. Uh, Adam Walker, hey there, homie. Hey there, Adam. How you doing? Adam, if you don't know, is the one who made my title sequence. So there you go. Hi to Sloth does this. Very cool name. I think the BBC should uh, make special episodes in 2023 written by former TV showrunners. I could see them doing it. I could say, I've said before, like, for the 60th, I could see a Dark Dimension type thing happening, where basically it's based around the old Doctor, um, you know, and it's written by someone who perhaps is an old writer, um, and perhaps you get cameos from the other Doctors as well. Like, not on the level of the 50th, but something a bit more low-key. I could definitely see something like that happening. Um, yeah. That reminds me, uh, Davros hasn't been in the Chippenhall area yet. No, he has not. It is, it is still serving me well. I still use it now. When did you make it, actually? Um, start of this year, wasn't it? I, uh, yeah, I did. Um, I did pay him. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I've always thought having a Davros story that doesn't really include Daleks would be really interesting. Exactly. Uh, I think an adaptation of Davros would be a great, uh, great one to do. Uh, you think they'll make a special intro with different music for the BBC Centenary of the 60th? Possibly? Maybe? I don't really know. Um, I mean, they did... Actually, that reminds me. Um, the official Doctor Who account did post something in the replies to, I believe it was Richard Lloyd. Uh, see if I can find it now. Hang on. So that was that. They basically said, oh, what could the music in the background be in replies to somebody? Um, uh, hang on, if I can find Richard Lloyd. 
Why can't I find him? He's called like Stats and Doctor on Twitter, I think. Aha, here we go. So, um, there was one of these tweets that they replied to with something interesting, which kind of implies that Find the Doctor is still going, which um, is, is a weird one. Um, was it this one? I don't really know. Uh, I don't know which tweet it was. Uh, I don't know whether I'm going to be able to find it, but... Oh, it, this one. Maybe. Oh, god damn it. Alright, officially solved. Hang on. So, final find the doctor clue. If you run the original video, not re the reverse version, through music identification software, Shazam, uh, you get the following result. Capitalize E T E, constitute the final letters of the password. Mystery complete. So, that's basically. So, the music. I think that was the hint that uh, the, the Doctor Who account were hinting towards was that basically the music is the final clue. So, there's that. Yeah, that was the official way to solve Find the Doctor, but it wasn't the way that most people did it. Most people did it through just looking at the source code, which um, you'd think that they'd go to the lengths of trying to protect for something like that, but I mean, I don't know. I couldn't even find this Find the Doctor thing. It wasn't really just one website, it was a sort of collection of things, basically. Uh. Pfft. What else is going on? I'm gonna take a drink. My throat's still quite dry. Uh, do you think Doctor Who should have an animated show? I'd be down. Uh, maybe for CBBC they could feature a different Doctor per episode with old Doctors in the current one doing a short story per episode. Yeah, yeah, I'd be down for something like that. Whether they um, have the money, I don't know, but I would be down. I'm not gonna. I wouldn't say no to any new Doctor Who content, really. It's just whether they do it. If Ten came back, are they gonna use the theme by Murray Gold? You'd assume so. Then again, I always found it weird when Captain Jack came back, um, and they they didn't they didn't use his theme then. You should have a beer. Yeah, I don't think I've, we've got any in actually, which is um. How so far the Doctor Hall control shift R, yeah, basically. Altharius, you have uh, the wind wind dryness I feel for you. Uh, I know what it's like. Nothing you can do to quench the first. Yeah, exactly. It's horrible. It's absolutely horrible. Imagine a what if Doctor, yeah, that'd be great. Basically more of turn left. That would be fantastic. Yeah, my throat, I'm probably going to stop now because my throat is just a little bit... <sighs> so uh, thank you all though for tuning in. It's been a very real fun stream. Uh, a bit less planned, but thank you for that. Uh, obviously, the the um, the um obviously the whole stream will be available here to view as soon as this stream ends. So um, if you haven't uh, seen it or are only just joining, you can watch all the bits back. Don't worry, it'll be great. Um, I'll see you all in a bit. Uh, yeah, my throat's just knackered, so... Um, I'm going to head off, but thanks.